I'm talking about good staging yard design while I upgrade and expand my own staging yards on Ron's Trains and Things right now. I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you've followed my channel for a while, you know that over the past couple of years, I've been expanding my layout, which has included the addition of a few new industries, but greatly expanding the capacity of several others. This means significantly more rolling stock on my layout, which means longer trains. Now, my online yards and passing sightings were already long enough to accommodate this new traffic, but unfortunately, my staging yards are not. So today, I'm going to be fixing that and a few other problems as I upgrade my staging yards. And as I do, I'm going to talk about some good staging yard design, some considerations that you might want to think about as you build your own staging yard for your layout. So let's head into the utility room where my staging yards are, and we'll get started. This video is brought to you by Midwest Model Railroad. With 15,000 square feet of inventory and one-day shipping, whether in person or online, they are your one-stop model railroad shop. MidwestModelRR.com. Link in the description. My staging yards are stacked east on the bottom, west on top, along the end wall of my utility room, which is adjacent to my main layout. When I built them 10 years ago, this was all the space that I could negotiate. The tracks will accommodate between 14 and 16 60-foot cars and two locomotives. With the expanded operations on my layout, however, I need to be able to run trains up to 20 cars with three locomotives. To be truly functional, each staging yard track should be able to hold one full train as it will run on the layout. I would say this is rule number one of good staging yard design. Mine isn't even close at this point. Well, as my kids have grown and moved out and with some downsizing in my house, I managed to negotiate another four feet at the end of the staging yard for expansion. This new space should make the yards more functional. While I'm working in the staging area, I'm going to make several other improvements as well. Now, you can see in these images that the staging yards are built into the existing framework from some old built-in shelving that was here when I bought the house. This support framing isn't very pretty, but it is very strong and stable, so I used it and I'm going to make it look better by the time we get done. I have quite a bit of leftover materials in my garage from building my previous layout, this original layout, the expansion, and other projects around the house, so I was able to build the staging expansion with just those materials. The support stringers and cross members are 2x3 stock, and the sub roadbed is half inch A grade sanded plywood. Step one was to cut the support members to length, to rip a couple of them to width, and to cut the plywood to size. With the materials cut, I proceeded to install the support members. Working first on the top yard, I screwed everything together with drywall screws, making sure it was solidly connected to the existing yard and that it was perfectly level. The yard is two feet deep, and I installed one central cross member in the middle, creating a two foot square open grid. I then installed the plywood sub road bed, also with drywall screws. For the entire structure, I drilled pilot holes and countersunk the screws to make sure that the screw heads were below the surface and to keep them from splitting or splintering the wood. You see here that I had considered leaving a shelf that would have been between the two decks, but later I discovered that I would have no room to work on the lower deck, so I removed it. With the top deck benchwork installed, I moved to the bottom deck and proceeded in the same manner. On the original staging area, I had installed these blisters on the side to support a balloon track on each level, allowing me to turn trains as I staged them. These blisters were scabbed onto the side of the benchwork, which allowed me to remove them and reuse them. I first removed the balloon track from the end of each staging yard, then removed the plywood top from each blister and unscrewed the framing from the side of the benchwork.
With both blisters removed from the original position, I reinstalled them onto the side of the new bench work. First the framing, using some shims to make sure that it was level and flush with the bench work, then the plywood top. Notice that I have completely cleaned and sanded the plywood to remove the old adhesive from the previous track. Having installed the bottom blister first, I then repeated the same process on the top deck. I didn't get it filmed, but I also installed this 1x4 leg to support the outer edge of the blisters and to keep them level. This 1x4 is a terribly warped piece of lumber that has hung around in my garage for years, but I was able to custom cut the bottom so that it sat squarely on the floor, and so as ugly as it is, it will serve this purpose just fine. Next, I prepared to lay track. I keep this homemade compass around for making standard curves on my layout. It's just an offcut from a ripped piece of lumber. In it, I have drilled a pivot hole and holes at 16, 18, and 20 inches. To mark the radius of the balloon track, I measured the position of the center of the curve, screwed the compass temporarily to the center point, and marked the curve with a pencil using my 18 inch radius hole. I then began marking lines for the extended yard tracks. Normally I mark center lines for laying track, but to extend these existing straight tracks, it was easier to use a straight edge and to mark the near side of the track and lay the track next to those lines. I marked the reverse curve where the balloon track curves back into the tangent track with an 18 inch radius track setta. If you're not familiar with track setta, it's a great series of tools for marking specific radii and they fit between the rails as you lay track in order to keep the track perfectly in the radius as you lay it. They are available in both HO and N scale and in a variety of radii. If you'd like to check them out, I have a number of them in both HO and N scale in an Amazon list, and I will link that in my Amazon pick of the week in the description down below. I prepared the ends of the existing track for extension by removing spike detail from the last tie to allow rail joiners to slip in, and I also evened up and filed any rail ends that were not smooth and even. You can see here how I use a number 17 chisel blade to remove the tie spike detail and slip a rail joiner between the rail and the ties. This way it's not necessary to add filler ties in between the track joints later. This process won't work for every application, but when soldering straight tracks together, it works really well. After preparing all of the track ends, I glued the track down with latex caulk. I lay a bead of caulk along the center of the track area, smooth it down with a putty knife, then slip the joint together and set the track into the adhesive. I use a metal straight edge to keep these tangent tracks relatively straight. I continue this process all the way across the yard. I pressed each track joint into the caulk really well as long as nothing disturbs these straight tracks while the adhesive dries, there's no need to weigh it down. For each staging track, I added one full joint of track plus about another foot, a total of four feet in length. With all of the stub-ended tracks laid, I began laying the balloon track. This can be tricky as the balloon track takes parts of three different sections of track. As the rail slides in the ties to allow for the curve, I have to remove some ties here to allow the rail joiner to slide back and forth. I also have to nip off the long rail and solder the joints of this track as I go. It's important to solder these joints straight before you curve that portion of the track to avoid kinks in the track. Where necessary, I use push pins to hold the track in place on these curves until it dries. I also use push pins driven into the plywood as backstops at the end of the stub ended staging tracks. Once the adhesive was cured, 
I set about soldering all of the joints. I use a micro brush to apply a spot of liquid flux to each rail. I only solder the outsides of the rails to avoid gauge problems. Then it's just a matter of a hot iron and a small amount of solder and the joints are set. I use this small makeup mirror glued to a block of wood to help me see as I solder to the back side of the rails. The trick to soldering rail is to have a hot iron and be quick on and quick off without applying too much solder. After the joints are soldered, I clean and check every joint. This is the one and only time that I use a bright boy on my track. I use it to remove any solder debris and flux from the rail heads. I use an NMRA gauge to make sure that no ties melted and pulled the track out of gauge. After the adhesive is completely set, I use an old toothbrush and some denatured alcohol to remove any excess flux from the rails. I repeated all of this process for laying the track on both decks. And when all was done, I vacuumed up everything and tested each track with a train. Now, I have a few more upgrades to make, but before I do, if you find this video helpful and would like to see more Model Railroad tips, tools, and techniques to help you build your dream layout, then be sure to subscribe down below and click the little bell icon so you can catch future videos. The second upgrade I made was in the area of lighting. Since I needed lighting over the new staging area, I thought it would be a good time to upgrade all of the staging lighting to match that on the rest of the layout. Step one is throwing the breaker to make sure that everything is dead. Now, I'm not going to show you the actual wiring here. If you're capable of doing this kind of household wiring and it's legal for you to do so where you live, then by all means do. If not, then hire a professional to help. Personally, I've been trained to do household wiring back in my construction days and it's legal for me to do such basic wiring where I live, so I do it myself. The lights that I'm using are Barina LED light tubes with a color temperature of 5000 Kelvin, exactly like the fixtures currently on my layout. Once the first light is installed, subsequent fixtures can simply be plugged into the previous ones for up to eight daisy chain fixtures. The small clamps that hold the tubes in place simply screw into the mounting surface. In this case, some cross braces between the floor joists overhead. The tube snaps into place and the provided cord plugs the two tubes together and I tie the excess cordage up with a nylon wire clamp. The result is a nice, well-lit staging area. These Barina lights are super easy to install and they make great lighting and they're really affordable. Again, if you're interested in them, I'll link them as well in the Amazon pick of the week in the description. The third upgrade is cosmetic. I installed fascia onto the front of the staging bench work. This fascia is made from eighth inch tempered hardboard, just like that on the main layout. And I screwed it in place with truss head screws. This step really dresses up the area. The next upgrade was to install electrical switches for each staging track so they can be turned on and off so idle locomotives aren't drawing power unnecessarily from the DCC system. The first step here was to get a single pole, single throw on off switch for each track. I mounted them in one of the fascia sections so I needed to drill an appropriate size hole for each switch. I'm mounting the switches for both levels on the upper fascia, so I measure, marked, and drilled two rows of holes in that fascia. I worked over a scrap of plywood so as not to damage the surface below with a drill bit. I drilled small pilot holes first, then followed with a half inch bit needed to accommodate the switches. I lightly sanded away the burrs left by the drill with some 220 grit sandpaper. I then mounted each switch into the mounting holes, 16 switches in all for eight staging tracks on each level. I later realized this was a wasted step as I ended up taking each of these switches back out to wire it and to paint the fascia and then remounted them, but live and learn. Here you see me mounting the painted switch panel without the switches installed. 
Having wired the common side of the switches together at the workbench, I then reinstalled them and tightened them down into the fascia. Simple labels from a label maker indicate which yard and which track each switch powers. I didn't film it, but I cut an insulating gap in each track, then connected the existing track wiring into these switches. The fifth and final upgrade that I made to the staging area was to install waybill boxes for every track. Now, as you've seen, I have limited space to mount these boxes on the fascia, so I wanted double deck boxes. I built this double deck waybill box years ago from some scrap masonite, but the process was rather tedious, so I decided to take a 21st century approach and design one for 3D printing. I designed this box in Tinkercad, a free, easy to use online CAD program. I printed them on my Creality Ender 3 version 2 printer. To cover every track, I needed five of these boxes. They took almost a day each to print and used a lot of filament, but when I did the math, they were still much cheaper than buying the corresponding number of commercially available waybill boxes. I mounted them to the lower fascia with screws. I think they look and work great. Finally, extending my cosmetic improvements that I mentioned earlier, I painted the rest of the fascia the same green color that I use on the fascia on the layout, and I painted the stanchions in the front black. This really dressed up the staging yard, so it looks much more presentable, as it is also much more functional than before. This upgrade to my staging will really accommodate my expanded layout well. If you'd like to see more about the expansion of my layout and other Model Railroad content, check out the links on your screen. Remember those Amazon Picks of the Week in the description down below, and join me on Fridays as I bring you even more great Model Railroad videos, and I'll see you on the next video. Tim, Lizzie?